Hey guys, how's it going? It's the gentleman again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to continue the videos on AR Foundation. I, I wanted to answer one of the questions from some of you who asked me about actually changing the images in runtime and being able to change, basically set the reference library. So I was looking into the documentation and it looks like Unity added that functionality. And that's what I want to show you today. I want to show you how you can set the reference library in runtime what are things that you need to look for to make sure that it's you know you don't encounter as many issues as i did when i was trying to figure it out so the scene that i have right now it's basically a scene that i that i worked on previously this one is called image tracking runtime i just basically i'm using this as a copy of the previous one that i show you where we show a card and then when the card is detected we play the video so I'm going to hit play so that you can see, we can go back to, so what I'm going to show you is how it runs. So let me just go ahead and pull it up. Let's go ahead and go into my finder. So this is a demo of me running this on the, on my device. Back to my channel. So today I'm pretty excited because I'm going to come. And let me go ahead and mute it so you don't see that. But that's basically the card. I am, that's my gene membership. And you know, as soon as it detects it, it plays the video. I also have a few analytics and those analytics are here on the very top. They're a little hard to see, but let me see if I can get it to, if I can show them better. I think right about there looks better. So this is just some information, some debugging information that also comes back from the image tracking manager. One is it's gonna be the, whether the whether the texture is supported. Also, how many, how many textures we currently have in the, that we support based on the device that I'm running this on. So this is the iPhone XS. So that says that it supports eight different textures, at least for the image tracking, the air tracking that I'm using. And then, you know, the, the name of the prefab that I'm using, how many, how many number of moving images I set, which is three, if it supports a mutable library. So the concept of a, of a mutable library is, is interesting because I, I started reading about that today, so I'm going to show you that in the code and explain to you that in the code. Just keep that in mind. And then also whether the the subsystem, which is the iOS subsystem, supports the, it requires a physical image dimension, which it does. So these are just different properties that are going to be based on the device that you're running on. So let me go ahead and, and go into the code and I'll show you how this looks like. So. The same structure as everything, every other one of my videos, I have a directional light, an AR session, and then my AR session origin. And most of the work is gonna be in this track, it, track image info runtime manager that I created. If you click on it, you'll see that it's also under the scripts in conjunction with all the other scripts that I created before. So I have a debug label, which is going to be this debug label right here. That it, That's basically what I show you where I was printing additional information from the tracker. So if we go back here, we also have the image name. So the image name is gonna be displayed on the bottom. If you if we go back to that video, let me go ahead and go back to the video. And right about here, you can see that there is, it detects the image. So the image that I am, that I have on my hands is for my car gym. So that name comes from the image library assets. I believe I show you this already, but if you haven't watched that video, just know that these are some of the image assets that I have already. I have a Unity logo, I have my library car, my Sam's Club car, and this probably should be more friendly. So let's just call it car gym, or we can just say gym car. I think that's that's more proper English. Okay, so I just have a few, few of them in here. And then if we go back into the air session origin, you're gonna see that I also have the place tv3 which is going to be that video that i showed you in the beginning and then the scale factor I, this is normally what i use and then also the reference image library which is this one right here and just keep in mind that i could swap this in runtime and that's why this is going to be so powerful now so i'm going to show you that in the next video where we're going to have multiple of them and then we can swap them and maybe we'll just have one card per image library and then as i swap it it'll detect the images on the on the new reference library selected and then so on so let's go ahead and look at the code there's a couple of things that i want to show you so i show you some of these properties that are exposed these are the same ones that i use you know that i just show you right here and the other things that are really important right now are the you know the ability to add a track manager 
dynamically and that means that we are going to be adding this through code in previous versions of AR, AR Foundation you couldn't do this because the AR Track Image Manager was getting set on the basically was trying to look for the reference library in the on enable method and it was throwing an exception it was throwing an error that it wasn't it didn't really allow us to do that so what unity is doing now is we can do we have this method called create runtime library so if you want to create the first thing that we're going to do is basically add the component so the air track image manager is going to be the component that we're going to be used to track images in the scene in the real world and then the next thing that you need to do is you gotta say okay now that i have that component i need to add a reference library that is going to contain all the reference images that we're going to allow the user from detecting so that's basically what this property is going to be and then the way that you create a runtime library is by calling the track manager create runtime library and then passing basically passing a list of reference image library which is going to be the one that we're referencing through this through the inspector so if you wanted to change this to be you know something else something else if it's this one was number two we can basically add it to another method and then toggle those two for now let's just keep it on one so that i can show you that you know how it works and then the next thing that i'm doing here as well and you could have done this through the inspector but i did it this way i'm actually setting this up in the you know in the script if you remember on the previous scene on other scenes we were you know we we had to add this and then another, the other property was a reference library and then the other property was the max number of moving images in this case i'm just basically adding this through code and then the other thing that i also was able to add before through the inspector was the prefab on track i am doing it as well here but i'm not adding it through the inspector that is available by adding the air track image manager itself the other thing that is really important if you're going to create a, a air track image manager dynamically meaning that you do that through code is if you do this and you don't by default this is going to be disabled the reason why it's going to be disabled is because it's going to look for a reference image library as soon as this executes so the way that it's going to work is this is going to execute on enable the star is going to get executed after that so that's why that's why at this point you need to enable the track manager again because at this point it's going to be disabled because it's required the reference library is required when this object is creating i hope that makes sense but just know that you need to set it to true as if you're doing this dynamically right after you set your image library and then basically your max number of moving images and also the tracking prefab so right after that what i do is i add a, basically i bind to the track images change event so anytime a new image gets gets added or updated or deleted this is going to be the event that gets executed and you can see what i'm doing here this is exactly what i did before i am passing an ar track images change event arguments and then i'm changing the name of the image and then i'm also changing the lo lo the local scale of the object that i'm, that I'm getting at it in this case in this case is the video that i'm playing but i'm basically resizing it and adjusting it so that it looks good and then i do the same thing when the image gets updated meaning when i'm moving the car around this is the event that is going to get called so why why am i going through this and and the reason why i'm going through this is because it's really powerful if you can change the reference libraries dynamically i i also want to be able to 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 take a screenshot of an image and then as soon as i take a screenshot drop it into this image library i'm going to do that in, in one of the future videos i in fact I, i've been working on it i just haven't finished it but the way that this is going to work is i'm going to basically have to call a, a unity job and you can probably i don't want to go into too much detail here but the way that this works is going to we're going to be creating images through code we're going to be basically telling the unity job system that we're going to be adding and schedule an image that image is going to get added it's going to be it's going to be a background job once the job is completed it's going to tell us it it's completed and then the cool thing about this is we're going to be able to not only select screenshots but also select areas of the screen that we want to capture and then as soon as those get captured they get dropped into the library and then we can therefore start detecting those images in real in real time so for now i'm going to be doing that in a future video but i hope this was helpful guys but just know that if you need to add this dynamically this is the way that you do it and then i'm going to be also allowing adding multiple image Im, multiple reference image libraries in future videos and also adding images you know in real time 
where you can actually take a screenshot or select a section of the screen. So that's everything that I wanted to show you for now, but if you guys have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.